Good afternoon. On behalf of my uh, colleagues at Texas A&M University, uh, it's a pleasure to be here to uh, share with you some of the good news that uh, is going on in terms of research at Texas A&M University. Um, although I'll be focusing on energy and the environment uh, components of our research program, uh, do be aware that, uh, that we have research activities that go far beyond uh, just these two areas. I'll allude to those a little bit uh, as we, we go through the uh, presentation. Um, just for those that uh, might not be familiar with Texas A&M's presence here in Qatar, we began our undergraduate program in 2003. Um, we offer undergraduate programs at this point in time in chemical, electrical, mechanical, and petroleum engineering. Uh, it's our plan to offer a graduate program beginning in the fall of 2011. Um, we are now staffed up to have approximately 80 faculty members. And uh, importantly, uh, we received our ABET accreditation in uh, August last year. We are graduating students. We have over 150 graduates now. And uh, you can see how the demographics are split out. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, most of them have uh, full-time employment lined up uh, here in the state of Qatar following graduation. As I mentioned, the new graduate program we anticipate uh, beginning uh, this coming fall with a Master of Engineering, which is a non-thesis program, uh, Master of Science program having both thesis and non-thesis options. Uh, we believe this is a very important uh, component of having a uh, viable research program, and we're looking forward to having that start. <clears throat> Our research activities began in uh, 2006 and 2007. And our formal research program is anticipated to begin in January uh, in just a few weeks. But what we're looking at is a focus on uh, additional resources on very important issues to the university, of course, but more importantly to the state of Qatar. And how we can provide benefit to the government and industry, and uh, how we can uh, provide in the very important research infrastructure that you've heard uh, my fellow speakers this morning refer to, as well as to uh, comments made by Her Highness this morning. Of course, a research program will provide our faculty and staff with growth opportunities, and along with our undergraduate and graduate educational programs, we believe the uh, research program is going to be a very important response to the four pillars of the Qatar National Vision 2030. As uh, Maj pointed out, uh, the National Vision is uh, based on these four pillars, human development, social development, economic development, and environmental development. And I hope that you see after uh, I've shared my slides with you that uh, our programs, I think, will contribute to all four of those pillars. Our programs uh, across the university here in Doha include more than 100 projects over the past uh, three years and we've secured external funding commitments in excess of $70 million. We have over 150 uh, highly trained researchers that are involved in the program, including the faculty, of course, but also postdocs and technicians as well. We're at a point now where we're producing about 150 publications each year. Our researchers have produced uh, seven invention, invention disclosures, uh, one of which has resulted in a US patent. A large portion of our research funding comes from the competitive grants offered by the Qatar National Research Fund, that is its NPRP, or National Priorities Research Program. This was initiated in 2007. We've been through uh, three cycles of funding. Over the, uh, of the 70 plus million dollars that Texas A&M has in external funding commitments, uh, 60 million of that uh, is from the National Priorities Research Program. And we've had excellent faculty participation as well as student participation, even though uh, we do not have a graduate program in place yet. In addition to the NPRP QNRF support, we also have uh, great support for our research activities from industrial and government sponsors. You can see them listed here. <clears throat> Now, changing uh, or focusing now a bit more just on the environment, energy environment research, um, share these 
general objectives with you. Uh, we strive to improve the oil and gas productivity here in the country, uh, to increase the country's hydrocarbon reserves, to look at novel energy sources and uses of energy, and of course to do all of these things in a manner that protects the environment. Next, I'm going to share some uh, projects that are underway, uh, give you an idea of the breadth of projects that uh, are taking on. Uh, if we're looking at the improvement of gas and oil productivity and increasing reserves, uh, we've got a wettability uh, project that's uh, sponsored by RAS Gas. Um, another looking at uh, movement of uh, condensates uh, sponsored by QNRF as uh, one of the NPRP programs. Looking at uh, condensate dropout uh, sponsored by Schlumberger. This is a relatively mature project uh, reaching uh, completion. Looking at ways to improve uh, getting the oil and gas out of the, out of the uh, ground, we're looking at horizontal and multilateral wells. Uh, this again is a Q QNRF NPRP sponsored uh, project. Looking at uh, effects of uh, spent acid on uh, rock wettability, QNRF sponsored project. Fracturing project also sponsored by QNRF. Now, once we've gotten the oil and the gas out of the ground, it's important to be able to do something with it. And in the case of uh, natural gas, one of the important things going on in the country has to do with uh, converting that natural gas, gas, the methane, into liquids. Uh, everything from, uh, say, kerosene or diesel fuel uh, to waxes. We have ongoing research projects uh, involved uh, in this research looking at the uh, cobalt catalyst used in the Fischer-Tropsch uh, process. Um, you'll actually hear a presentation by one of the researchers later this afternoon, so I'll probably steal a little bit of his thunder here saying uh, something about the uh, development of the, uh, the catalysts and uh, some of the outcomes he's already had. But uh, nonetheless, this is something that's very relevant to the uh, needs of the state of Qatar in the way of uh, Fischer-Tropsch catalysis. Once the uh, GTL has been produced from the methane, uh, one of the products is the uh, jet fuel, and uh, we've got two projects looking at that. Again, the researchers this afternoon will be presenting uh, more detailed information about this. This project is in partnership with uh, Shell and the University of Sheffield and is uh, part of our collaborations with QSTP, but basically it's looking at the physical properties of the uh, synthetic jet fuel to make sure that it uh, basically is uh, flight worthy. Another project that you'll be hearing this afternoon looks at the combustion pro properties of the uh, synthetic jet fuel. Uh, we want to make sure that if there's a problem in flight, for instance, the uh, fuel uh, will flow and can be reignited uh, in the engines. What you see there is an ignition test facility that can simulate not only uh, the combustion process at atmospheric pressure, but also at the atmospheric pressure that you would see at uh, 30, 35,000 feet. This is a very interesting use of the methane. Again, you'll hear a presentation by uh, Dr. Ozalp this afternoon. This project is taking the methane and using um, this, the abundance of solar energy that we have here to crack the methane producing carbon black and hydrogen. Um, a couple of things that are unique here is that uh, this is a so-called smart solar reactor that reacts to changing uh, solar radiation conditions. But it's also, and probably more importantly, a unique design in how it uses the flows of the methane and uh, shielding gases to prevent the uh, reactor from becoming clogged and having catastrophic failure. This is being done in collaboration with QSTP and uh, Fraunhofer Institute. Protecting the environment, we're looking at uh, capturing uh, carbon dioxide and doing some useful things with it. Uh, first there is looking at the injection of CO2 into the oil reservoirs to improve uh, oil recovery. 
and uh, the second is looking at the storage of CO2, uh, the first being sponsored by QNRF and uh, second by Schlumberger. A very important initiative that we have related to the environment is a relatively recently established uh, initiative uh, that we're calling the Cutter Sustainable Water and Energy Utilization Initiative. This was established under the patronage of His Excellency the Minister of Energy. It has uh, several objectives here, uh, addressing sustainability, uh, knowledge and technology transfer, providing technical services uh, to our stakeholders. Um, something very important is to establish and, and uh, engage in com campaigns uh, to promote uh, the need to have a sustainable envi environment to the wider public and, of course, as always, to develop the human capacity. Um, the QWE was founded by two of our professors, Patrick Linke and Ahmed Abdel Wahab. Uh, has a strategic advisory board listed here, and we currently have two consortium members, Chevron and uh, Rasgas. The uh, Water Environmental uh, Center includes research activities worth more than uh, six million dollars, but also uh, the bottom half of the list there is very important in that it conducts or provides technical service uh, to the state of Qatar and various entities within it looking at uh, uh, water, wastewater, soil, and sludge samples, uh, modeling and simulation. We can assess technology and provide general technical support uh, to our stakeholders. And of course, we're uh, building capacity. We uh, organize practical training uh, programs, workshops, symposia, and set, et cetera. Um, one of the hallmarks of things that we do at Texas A&M is the uh, notion of learning through doing, and this is certainly being done in our capacity building projects. Um, we use the QWE um, for uh, providing world-class laboratories for these courses, and of course we transfer the findings of the research uh, to our students that are enrolled in the classes have a wide range of state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, you see some of them uh, listed here. Some of the projects that we have ongoing under the center's uh, leadership is looking at uh, desalination of water. Um, it's no secret to anybody who has been here for a period of time to know that um, the state of Qatar depends almost entirely on desalinated water uh, for its fresh water. Uh, the processes that are used now work well uh, when they're near the sea, but uh, our researchers have developed a process that produces zero liquid discharge, so it uh, can find application uh, inland uh, where there's not a, a mechanism by which one can discharge the uh, brackish water that's produced as a byproduct. Again, this is uh, part of our involvement with QSTP, and this is one of our proof, proof of concept projects with QSTP. We're also looking at the effects of um, using seawater in industrial cooling applications at Ross Lafon. Uh, we're looking at the effects that has on the environment and uh, what uh, can be done to mitigate those effects. A longer term outcome of this project is to provide some uh, assistance and work collaboratively with the government in developing sound regulatory policies. While the uh, gas that is produced out of the north field uh, does not have uh, terribly high concentrations of H2S, it does have uh, H2S that has to be dealt with, and so the byproduct of sulfur that uh, is produced as part of the uh, liquefaction process needs to be dealt with. And we have our researchers that are working on a variety of ways to use that sulfur, uh, looking at uh, it to treat uh, hazardous wastes, uh, looking at it to be incorporated into uh, uh, cement and uh, masonry uh, structures and so forth. A um, couple slides to summarize. Um, Texas A&M's external research funding uh, in the first column there, like I said, we have over 100 projects. Uh, 60 of those approximately come from the QNRF uh, NPRP program. 
Uh, we have five projects that are being uh, undertaken in collaboration with QSTP and uh, 13 projects uh, in partnership with the companies here in uh, Doha. In terms of uh, strategic research initiatives, we have two underway, uh, the Cutter Water and Energy Utilization Initiative, which I talked to you about. We also have, in collaboration with Cutter University Materials uh, Research Center, in our engagement with the government, uh, we've branched out and uh, been working for almost two years now with the uh, Cutter National Food uh, Safety Program, uh, the Ministry of the Interior. We're collaborating in uh, transportation safety initiatives, uh, the Environment and Public Works Authority as well. Our research efforts uh, are very, I think, uh, prolific for the modest size that we are right now. Uh, we're producing typically between uh, 140 and 175 journal publications uh, per year and another uh, 200 or so conference presentations. As I mentioned, we've had uh, one patent uh, that's been issued and six more disclosures beyond that. Uh, we've conducted short courses, uh, as you see listed here, and uh, we've had our faculty make more than 200 presentations in various technical uh, conferences. In terms of uh, building research capacity, even though, uh, like I mentioned earlier, we are going to be starting our graduate program this fall, we have had students involved in our research activities uh, through the UREP, the Undergraduate Research Experience Program uh, that's uh, part of the Cutter National Research Fund. And of course, we have 80 full-time research professionals who've come from all over the world to be part of our programs here. So we believe that uh, Texas A&M University at Qatar, uh, the uh, research that we engage in responds to the needs of the state of Qatar and of course also does it in a way that supports the uh, Qatar National Vision 2030. Thank you very much.